Welcome to our YouTube channel. Today we discuss how the Starship spacecraft will transport astronauts to Mars. But first, let's briefly talk about the Starship and its specifications. The Starship, a behemoth of a spacecraft by SpaceX, aims to revolutionize space travel, particularly the much-anticipated crewed mission to Mars. It consists of two reusable vehicles, the Super Heavy Booster and the Starship spacecraft itself. The Super Heavy acts as a powerful first stage, while Starship houses the crew and cargo. The Starship is the fully reusable spacecraft and second stage of the Starship system. Super Heavy is the first stage, or booster, of the Starship launch system. It is powered by 33 Raptor engines, which uses sub-cooled liquid methane and liquid oxygen. It has a height of 71 meters, a diameter of 9 meters, and a thrust of 7,590 tons force. The Starship dwarfs most rockets, standing at 121 meters tall when stacked with the Super Heavy. This immense size allows for significant cargo and crew capacity. It is the world's most powerful launch vehicle ever developed, with a payload capacity capable of carrying up to 150 metric tons fully reusable and 250 metric tons expendable. Now that we're done with the specifications of this rocket, how does the Starship end up getting to Mars? Well, before embarking on their epic journey to Mars, astronauts need to reach the rocket and ensure it's properly fueled for liftoff. To fuel the Starship, large storage tanks holding the liquid methane and liquid oxygen propellants are located near the launch pad. These fuels are transported through specially designed pipelines to the Starship launch pad. The Super Heavy booster gets fueled first. The cryogenic propellants, methane and liquid oxygen, are extremely cold and specialized fueling systems are used to transfer the propellants efficiently and safely into the booster's tanks. Once the Super Heavy booster is fueled, the Starship itself is filled with propellants. Similar to the booster, specialized fueling lines connect to the fuel tanks, transferring the liquid methane and liquid oxygen needed for the initial launch phase. After the fueling is over, the crew follows a dedicated launch tower near the launch pad. This tower would provide a safe and convenient passage for astronauts to board the Starship through an access hatch located on the crew section of the spacecraft. The tower then retracts shortly before launch. The journey to Mars then begins on the launch pad. The Super Heavy booster roars to life, its numerous Raptor engines igniting with a fiery spectacle. For those who don't know, the Raptor engine is a reusable methane-oxygen staged combustion engine that powers the Starship system and has twice the thrust of the Falcon 9 Merlin engine. The Starship will be powered by six engines, three Raptor engines, and three Raptor vacuum engines, which are designed for use in the vacuum of space. So, this immense thrust propels the entire Starship stack straight upwards at an incredible acceleration, exceeding three Gs, which is three times the force of gravity. As the rocket climbs higher, it encounters increasing air resistance, the vehicle is meticulously designed to withstand this immense pressure. The body is made up of stacked rings of 300 series of stainless steel. Elon was initially considering advanced carbon fiber composite and aluminum alloy to build the Starship, but decided that stainless steel was the best option. As Starship blasts through Earth's atmosphere, friction with air molecules causes the vehicle's outer surfaces to heat up significantly. To fully withstand this heat during its ascent, Starship's entire underbelly and areas exposed to high heat flow are coated with a special thermal protection system. This system typically consists of a double wall design. The outer layer is a super alloy called Inconel, which can withstand extremely high temperatures of around 1,800 degrees Fahrenheit. The inner layer is a ceramic insulation blanket that helps trap cooler air inside the spacecraft. Not to mention, the overall shape of Starship is aerodynamically designed to minimize air resistance during ascent. This reduces the amount of friction heat generated in the first place. Additionally, angled fins on the Starship help manage airflow and reduce heating on the vehicle's body. It then continues its ascent, shedding its external launch clamps that held it secure on the pad. Then comes the booster separation. Once the Starship reaches a predetermined altitude and velocity, which is around six minutes into the flight, the Super Heavy booster has fulfilled its purpose. It executes a gravity turn, tilting its engine slightly towards the horizontal plane. This maneuvers Starship onto its intended trajectory towards Mars. 
Meanwhile, the Super Heavy detaches from the Starship with a powerful burst of flame, returning to Earth for a propulsive landing at a designated landing zone. The Starship's own Raptor engines then takes over propulsion duties. Depending on the mission plan, Starship might enter a coasting phase where it travels in a stable orbit around Earth for some time. This could allow for rendezvous and docking with Starship tanker variants. And this brings us to the Starship's orbital refueling. This is a process that would refuel the main Starship before its final departure to Mars. While the Starship itself is a very large spacecraft, its initial fuel capacity might not be sufficient for a fully loaded Mars mission. This is where Starship tanker variants come into play. Imagine a Starship solely dedicated to carrying additional fuel. This is essentially the Starship tanker variant. It lacks the upper passenger and crew compartments of the regular Starship, maximizing its fuel storage capacity. To begin this refueling procedure, a Starship tanker would be launched independently into Earth's orbit and await its rendezvous with the Starship that is heading for Mars. Now here's where things get tricky. The Starship designed for Mars needs to approach and dock with the tanker in orbit. This delicate maneuver requires precise guidance systems and may involve human input from the crew on board the main Starship. Successfully docking the two Starships creates a temporary fuel depot in orbit. Once docked, a fuel transfer process initiates. The propellant, which is likely liquid methane and liquid oxygen, flows from the tanker Starship's tanks to the main Starship's tanks through specially designed umbilical connections. This process can take several hours depending on the amount of fuel being transferred. After a successful fuel transfer, the starships carefully separate. The emptied tanker starship might return to Earth for reuse, or it could remain in orbit to await future refueling missions. By essentially topping off the fuel tank in orbit, starship gains the extra propellant needed for a crewed mission to Mars. This allows it to carry the necessary cargo and supports a larger crew for the extended journey. Now that the Starship is done refueling, it's time for it to continue its journey to Mars. Following the fiery launch and super heavy booster separation, Starship escapes Earth's gravity. It doesn't immediately launch towards Mars. Instead, it enters a carefully calculated elliptical orbit around the Sun. This orbit is highly elongated, with one end extending far out towards Mars's orbital path. This specific elliptical path is called a Hohmann transfer orbit. It takes advantage of natural gravitational forces to propel Starship towards Mars using minimal fuel. By strategically entering this transfer orbit, Starship leverages kinetic energy gained during its escape from Earth and the Sun's gravitational pull to efficiently reach Mars's orbital vicinity months later. And then it's time for the landing preparations. As Starship nears Mars, crucial preparations begin for its fiery entry and landing. Here's what unfolds. The Starship isn't designed for a single-use trip to Mars. It's intended to be reusable. Therefore, unnecessary equipment might be jettisoned at this point. This could include docking ports used for the orbital refueling stage, heat shield components no longer needed for the Martian entry, or empty cargo containers. Shedding this excess weight conserves fuel needed for the critical landing maneuvers. To slow down for Martian entry, the Starship's engines perform a retrograde burn. This means the engines fire in the opposite direction of Starship's travel. This reduces its orbital velocity, bringing it closer to Mars and preparing it for atmospheric entry. With the retrograde burn complete and the heat shield in place, Starship enters a period of powered descent. Its engines throttle down to a lower thrust level, guiding the spacecraft through the thin Martian atmosphere for a controlled landing on the red planet's surface. It then alights on the Martian surface and the starship stands upright on the red planet, marking a historic moment in human space exploration. The astronauts then makes a dramatic touchdown on the red planet, and the journey to Mars is a huge success. Let us know what you think about this journey to Mars. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we will see you in the next video.